center shaft and remove the viscous coupling. You may need to pry off the coupling with a pair of flat blade screwdrivers. Take care not to lose the steel ball in the center shaft. To install the replacement viscous coupling, first install the steel ball in the center shaft. You can hold it in place with petroleum jelly. You'll need to push up on the center shaft from the bottom when installing the ball so that the ball drops into the slot in the center shaft. Next, install the viscous coupling, making sure the ball stays in place. At this point, you'll need to check the center shaft snap ring groove width so that you can select the correct snap ring from the table in the service manual. To do this, support the center shaft from the bottom and measure the snap ring groove with a feeler gauge. Viscous coupling end play should be between four thousandths and ten thousandths of an inch. Suppose, for example, that the snap ring groove measures seventy-eight thousandths of an inch. This means the snap ring must be sixty-eight thousandths to seventy-four thousandths of an inch to allow acceptable end play. Looking at the table in the service manual, we see that the snap ring that is about 71 thousandths of an inch, coated yellow, is the correct size. After installing the snap ring, make sure that the wave spring is properly installed on the synchronizer. Two lugs hold the spring in place. Next, apply Mopar silicone rubber adhesive sealant to the cover and install the cover. Take care not to distort or damage the oil guides when doing so. Apply Mopar stud and bearing mount to the rear cover bolt threads and tighten the bolts to between 26 and 30 foot pounds. On vehicles equipped with a limited slip rear differential, replacing the viscous coupling is a fairly straightforward procedure. Let's look at the procedure on a laser differential. After removing the rear axle carrier from the vehicle, remove the bolts from the differential cover and remove the cover. Next, mark the caps so that they can be installed in their original positions and remove the bolts and bearing caps. Using hammer handles, slowly pry out the differential carrier. Take care not to drop the side bearing outer races and keep right and left bearing components separate. Next, put the carrier in a vise and mark both halves of the carrier and the ring gear so they can be reassembled in their original positions. Working diagonally, remove the bolts from the ring gear and remove the ring gear with a brass hammer or brass drift. Next, remove the two screws from the differential case halves. Turn the differential case over and separate the halves. You can now remove the viscous coupling. Replacing the viscous coupling may change the differential gear backlash. So before reassembling the differential case to the carrier, use the procedure in the service manual to make sure the backlash is in the specified range. Earlier, we described the role of the lobro joint in accommodating changes in angle and length in the propeller shaft assembly. As with any booted joint, the lobro joint should be inspected every year or every 15,000 miles for damage or leakage of lubricant. If the joint boot is damaged or leaking, 
the boot must be replaced and the joint itself may need to be lubricated or replaced. In order to service the Lobro assembly, you need to first remove the prop shaft assembly from the vehicle. To do this, first support the prop shaft and place mating marks on the prop shaft and differential coupling flanges. Also, mark the position of the prop shafts relative to one another. Disconnect the coupling by removing the bolts and remove the nuts from the two center bearing assemblies. To provide clearance for prop shaft removal, remove the rubber grommet and hanger at the center of the vehicle. Because of its length, you may need help removing the prop shaft assembly from the vehicle. Slide the prop shaft assembly rearward to remove the yoke from the transfer assembly. Slide the assembly forward through the muffler hanger to remove it from the vehicle. With the prop shaft on the bench, place mating marks on the companion flange and lobro joint assembly. Remove the retaining bolts and separate the joint from the companion flange. Then, remove the rubber packing from the rear side of the joint assembly. To remove the lobro joint from the center prop shaft, remove the snap ring and separate the joint from the boot. Then, use a puller to remove the joint assembly. To remove the boot, carefully loosen the boot band and pull the boot from the prop shaft. Before disassembling the lobro joint, make mating marks on the outer race, cage, and inner race. After removing the outer race, place the balls in numbered compartments corresponding to their position in the joint. This will help you place the balls in their original locations during reassembly. Check the ball grooves in the inner and outer races for wear, damage, or rust after cleaning off the old grease. Also, check the ball's surfaces and the cage for rust, wear, or damage. If there is damage, replace the entire lobro joint. If you do reassemble the original parts, you'll need to use the lobro joint boot kit. To reassemble the joint, apply a thin coat of grease from the repair kit to the ball grooves on the inner and outer races. Do not substitute any other grease for the one in the repair kit. Put the cage on the inner race with the mating marks aligned and install two balls in grooves exactly opposite each other. The balls should be in their original positions. Next, place the inner race, cage, and balls in the outer race, aligning the mating marks as you do so. Make sure that the recessed end of the inner race